In 2016, the US Department of Defense, in conjunction with its counterparts in the United Arab Emirates, began planning for a large-scale military operation in western Yemen. The target of this operation was a compound in the small village of Al-Gayul, but unfortunately what exactly the primary objective was is to this day unclear. According to several media outlets citing unnamed US military officials, the objective was to take out Qasim al-Rimi, the leader of the AQAP, who is said to be using the compound as a safe house. On the other hand, these claims are disputed by the US Department of Defense, who state that the operation was to gather vital intelligence regarding AQAP activities in the region, and that there was no thought of going after a high-value target such as Al Rimi. Colonel John Thomas, a spokesman for the US Central Command, which was to have operational control over the mission, later explained that. There was no discussion of Al Rimi potentially being at that objective, we didn't expect to see him there, we didn't plan for him to be there, and this was not a raid that had anything to do with targeting that individual. The objective was site exploitation to find out more about how AQAP operates, functions, and how they communicate with each other. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer also added that. He was not the focus of the operation, the goal of the raid was intelligence gathering. Nevertheless, whether the operation was simply intelligence gathering or targeting Qasim al-Rimi, preparations for the raid proceeded accordingly, and by mid-January 2017, those military assets earmarked for the operation had been forward deployed to East Africa, awaiting the order to move in. Stationed in Djibouti was the assault force centered around a detachment of US Navy SEALs from the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, also known as SEAL Team 6, who were tasked with leading the assault onto the target compound. This detachment was reinforced by a team of commandos from the United Arab Emirates who were to assist their American partners in translation and intelligence matters on the objective. Meanwhile, the USS Mackin Island amphibious assault ship was positioned off the coast of Yemen to act as the launch pad for the ground forces. In this role, the Mackin Island was to provide a handful of Osprey tilt-rotor aircraft to airlift the assault force into the target area and form a quick reaction force of US Marines from the 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit, who were to be on standby to deploy into Western Yemen should the assault force need assistance. Unfortunately, details concerning aerial support for the operation are limited, although it is known that Harrier fighter jets, attack helicopters and surveillance aircraft were employed. With regards to the attack helicopters, it is believed that these were either US Marine Corps AH-1Z Vipers embarked on the Mackin Island, or Yemen-based AH-64 Apaches of the United Arab Emirates Air Force. By late January 2017, the preparations and planning for the raid were complete, and on the 25th, US President Donald Trump, after consultation with his military and security advisors, gave authorization for the operation to be executed. The next day, the Navy SEALs and Emirati commandos were transferred from Djibouti to the USS Mackin Island, where final checks and briefings were carried out. Then, on the night of the 28th of January 2017, this assault force boarded two Osprey tilt-rotor aircraft and took off for their target. After a short flight through the mountains of western Yemen, the two Ospreys touched down on a secluded landing zone around 8 kilometers from Al Gayul, from where the American and Emirati troops disembarked from their aircraft and began marching on foot to their objective. However, it was during the advance to the village outskirts that concerning reports were received from the overhead surveillance aircraft which reported a sudden increase in activity around the target compound, where large groups of armed men and women were seen moving into pre-arranged firing positions that overlooked the American Emirati approach. Despite concerns that the operation had potentially been compromised, an order was issued directing that the raid continue as planned, and by early morning on the 29th of January, the assault force had arrived on the outskirts of Al Gayul and was beginning to push into the village itself, when suddenly the silhouette of a figure was observed approaching the force. This figure was 11-year-old Ahmed al-Dahab, a local Yemeni who lived in the village. Just minutes before, he had been awoken from his sleep by the sound of multiple aircraft flying above al Gayul, and with the rest of his family, he had gone out to investigate the commotion when he spotted the American Emirati troops entering the village. His father, Sheikh al-Dahab, later recalled, When my son Ahmed saw them, he couldn't tell that they were soldiers because it was dark. He asked them, Who are you? But the men shot him. 
he was the first killed. Immediately after Ahmed was shot, chaos broke out and out Gale, as groups of AQAP fighters emerged from buildings and battled with the American Emirati troops, and local residents who had no affiliation to an insurgent group took up arms to protect their houses and property. In the ensuing firefight, Navy SEAL Chief Petty Officer William Owens was killed in action when a bullet struck him in the chest just above his body armour, whilst three more SEALs sustained varying degrees of wounds during the engagement. With their casualties mounting and enemy fighters appearing from all sides, the assault force requested for extraction, and within 15 minutes, two Harrier fighter jets and two attack helicopters arrived over Al Gale and began strafing the village to cover the withdrawal of the ground troops. Simultaneously, two Ospreys were dispatched to pull the SEALs and Emirati commandos out from the area, but it was as the two aircraft touched down on the designated extraction point that one of them made a hard landing and in the process injured three of its crew. With the aircraft no longer airworthy, a third Osprey was sent out to assist with the extraction, which was completed without further incident, and by mid-morning on the 29th of January, the American Emirati force had returned to the Mackin Island. Once the area was clear of ground troops, one of the Harriers conducted a bombing run and destroyed the downed Osprey to prevent it falling into enemy hands. And thus concluded the Battle of Gale, which lasted for around one hour and was intense, confusing and bloody for all sides involved. For the American Emirati force, seven casualties were sustained, of which one was killed in action, and one Osprey tilt rotor aircraft was lost during the extraction phase. According to the AQAP, they lost 14 insurgents in the firefight, two of whom the US Central Command believed were key personnel to AQAP operational planning and weapons development. Undoubtedly though, those who suffered the most from the operation were the innocent Yemeni civilians caught in the middle of the battle. Unfortunately, their casualties have not been confirmed, but it is estimated that between 14 and 25 civilians lost their lives, including 9 children aged between 3 months and 12 years old. Curiously, in the aftermath, the US government hailed the operation as an overwhelming success, with White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer stating that, It was highly successful. It achieved the purpose it was going to get, saved the loss of life that we suffered and the injuries that occurred. I think anybody who undermines the success of that raid owes an apology and does a disservice to the life of Chief Petty Officer William Owens. The action taken in Yemen was this huge success. American lives will be saved because of it. According to the US Central Command, the greatest success achieved from the raid was the recovery of a large amount of intelligence material relating to the AQAP. For obvious reasons, the full extent of the information contained in this material hasn't been disclosed to the public. Although to prove that they did retrieve some valuable intelligence from the operation, the US Department of Defense released a one minute long video, which it claimed had been recovered from a computer in Al Gale and showed AQAP explosives training. This video, however, was quickly removed from US government websites after it was realized that the video dated back to 2007 wasn't linked to the AQAP and had been easily accessible online for the past 10 years. Ultimately, given how chaotic and intense the fighting was, it is difficult to piece together what exactly unfolded in Al Gale after the first shots were fired. For instance, it is not clear whether the American Emirati force actually reached the target compound at any point during the mission. Such details will be covered by an after-action report written by the US military in the days after the raid, although this report hasn't been declassified to the public at the time of this video. That said, just five weeks after the raid was conducted, General Joseph Fortel, the commander of the US Central Command, issued his own assessment of the operation that was far more candid than those statements provided by government officials. First and foremost, I am responsible for this mission. I am the CENTCOM commander and I am responsible for what is done in my region and what is not done in my region, so I accept the responsibility for this. We lost a lot on this operation, we lost a valued operator, we had people wounded, we caused civilian casualties, we lost an expensive aircraft. We did gain some valuable information that will be helpful for us. Our intention here was to improve our knowledge against the AQAP threat, and that was what we were focused on. We did an exhaustive after-action review on this operation, I presided over that. It went down to a level that included people who were on the specific objective. I think we had a good understanding of what happened on this objective, and we've been able to pull lessons learned out of that, that we will apply in future operations.
Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you never miss one of my future videos.